Vertical motors are often required to handle pump loads that exceed the thrust capacity of angular contact ball type bearings. Applications employing heavy multi-stage pumps, such as these geothermal wells used to produce electricity, require motors engineered with spherical roller thrust bearings capable of such heavy loads. Spherical roller thrust bearings, running at the speed ranges produced by electric motors, require compression springs to maintain a minimum preloading of this type bearing. This spring preloading prevents smearing damage between the bearing roller and its raceways. Adjusting the spherical roller bearing preload in play requires a different procedure than that used in vertical motors with ball type thrust bearings. In this tutorial, Reed demonstrates a procedure to set the compression spring preload in play in vertical motors with spherical roller thrust bearings. The spherical roller thrust bearing and springs are part of an assembly located in the upper end of the vertical motor. Here you see the bearing assembly dismantled down to the spherical roller thrust bearing race. The compression springs are located in a cartridge under this bearing race. Here are various examples of different cartridge assemblies with the preload compression springs located within the cartridge assembly. This is what the typical compression springs look like. A significant amount of pressure is obviously required to compress these heavy preload compression springs. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to set in play on a spherical thrust bearing. First, let me show you my rig here. I have our 10 ton crane attached to our spreader bar, which has two large industrial size chains attached to the motor's lifting ears. Then we're gonna need our little bracket here. <clears throat> that way we can put the ram between <clears throat> and compress the springs that are underneath the spherical roller bearing. And just like our uh, previous video on our YouTube channel, you want to use a jack to jack up the shaft. <clears throat> so let's get started. As you can tell, I have my dial indicator set up. That way, when I start to jack up the rotor, I am not going to damage the guide bearing by compressing it too hard against the inner bearing cap. Warning, warning, if while jacking up the shaft, you see no shaft or dial indicator movement, stop and investigate why there is no shaft movement. You cannot set spring preload in this condition. So once the needle stops, you know that the uh, guide bearing is touching the inner bearing cap. So next we're gonna put on our lark washer. and our lock nut. Now this might take a minute because as you can tell the motor manufacturer gave me a lot of threads to play with here. All right next you want to put the bracket over top then the ram. All right, and then with the ram, you want to start to compress the springs. <clears throat> but to protect the bearing, what you want to do is you want to watch your dial indicator because once the needle stops moving, the, the springs are compressed. If you over compress your spherical thrust bearing, the rollers will actually damage themselves by compressing into the, uh, the spherical race that's in the housing. So you don't want to go too tight. So you go 
tight enough and then when the needle stops then you know that the springs are compressed just like so then you want to set the dial indicator to zero just like so then <clears throat> tighten up the lock nut as you can tell the difference between the first video and this video is I'm not releasing the jack I'm only playing with the ram <clears throat> if you loosen the jack you're not really accomplishing anything so the lock nut is tight we'll release the ram and as you can tell, the, the needle didn't even move, so I was too tight. So what we need to do is back the nut off. The tolerances for a spherical thrust bearing is anywhere between 10 to 15 thousandths. You don't want it too tight because you can preload the lower bearing. And you don't want it too loose because you can damage the spherical bearing when they attach it to the pump and then you also do damage on the seals on the pump. So once we adjust it, we check it again. So as you can tell, I'm right on 15. I'm a little picky. I like mine to be on 13. So I'm gonna tighten my nut up just a little bit. recheck it and there you go and that's how you set and play on a spherical thrust bearing motor thank you